Today we're out here near Malibu, California, taking a look at the 2019 Mazda MX-5 Miata. For 2019, most of the Miata is basically the same as it was before, but there are some significant changes. We get an almost entirely new engine under the hood with more power, because of course, Americans love to complain about the power levels in the MX-5. We also get a tweaked automatic transmission with a different final drive ratio, a backup camera, and a tilt telescopic steering column. Does that make this one of the best sports car values in America? Let's take a look. Today we're going to do something a little bit different because at most new car launches we only have a few hours with the brand new vehicle. But Mazda decided to give us the MX-5 for two full days. And we're driving from San Diego, California all the way on up to San Luis Obispo, California, which is basically from the bottom end of the state right up to the middle along the coast. So stick with us as we talk about what's changed for 2019 in the vehicle and under the hood. And of course, take a peek around the cabin. Up front, you really won't be able to tell the difference between 2018 and 2019. We still have LED headlamps up front, and we still have a design language that's actually a little bit different than the rest of the Mazda family in America. Mazda says that it was deliberate to give this MX-5 a different look than the rest of the lineup. But personally, I think that I would like a version of the Mazda 6 or Mazda 3's nose grafted onto the front because I really think that would make this look very classy. Mazda tells us they were instead going for more of a sporty design, and that's definitely what we see here with these angry headlamps and this large opening at the bottom. The MX-5 is, at its heart, a Japanese interpretation of a classic British or Italian roadster. So this is quite small for the American market at 154 inches long. Interestingly enough, in a world where cars seem to get bigger and bigger with every generation, this is not only smaller than the last generation MX-5, it's actually a little bit shorter even than the very first MX-5 30 years ago. As a result, competition is a little bit more difficult to define than it once was with the MX-5. I suppose you could compare especially this hardtop version to something like a Chevy Camaro or a Ford Mustang convertible, which definitely would be in the same price range, but they're very different kinds of vehicle. The Camaro and the Mustang are about three feet longer than this. And if you're comparing this to something like a Dodge Challenger, which is not available as a convertible, but is in the same price range, it's about four feet longer. A classic Miata has a manually operating soft top, but the hard top does give us a quieter interior and it's powered. So if you're worried about operating the soft top by hand because you just don't want to, then this is a good alternative because it'll power open like this without you lifting more than just a finger. Although Mazda sells more hard top MX-5s at the moment than soft top MX-5s, the soft top really is the classic Miata. And it's a very simple mechanism, although it looks like I'm contorted here just to look at the camera. It's a one-handed operation to open and close the lid. To prove that to you, I'll just sort of face forward because it's a little bit easier to see. Just reach behind me, unlatch, grab the top, swing it forward, latch it into place. It's actually a very easy to use top, although shorter and taller drivers might find the seating position to be a little bit tricky. The small dimensions are really obvious out back. Just look at the size of this license plate versus the rest of the overall car. For 2019, we have a backup camera positioned right here in the middle of the bumper. Backup cameras are mandatory for all 2019 model year vehicles going forward, and that's why we see one right back here. You might be wondering why Mazda didn't choose to put the camera somewhere else. That's a really difficult question to answer. It may have required more extensive body modifications here for the trunk lid, which is metal. And of course, this bottom port of the bumper is plastic. We have LED turn signals in case you're interested and LED tail lamp modules. The big reason that we're out here looking at the 2019 MX-5 is because we get a power bump under the hood. Instead of just tweaking the two liter four cylinder engine that we found in the 2018 MX-5, they basically went back to the drawing board and changed almost everything except for the block. The result is that we now have 181 horsepower instead of 155 and 151 pound-feet of torque instead of 148. We still have a six-speed manual transmission standard and an optional six-speed automatic. Fuel economy with both transmissions comes in at 29 miles per gallon combined. The biggest thing you'll notice about this engine versus the last engine under this hood is that this is much more willing to rev. This will go up to 7,500 RPM and peak power happens at 7,000 RPM. So this engine really loves to rev. That's a little bit different than the 2018's 155 horsepower engine, which redlined a little bit lower than this and the power peak was definitely not nearly as high. 
In addition to the extra power, we also have a new dual mass flywheel, which is something that we typically don't find on inexpensive manual transmission vehicles like this. We generally find on more luxury oriented vehicles. It helps smooth out drivetrain vibrations, and that's exactly the reason that Mazda put it under this hood. The reason they didn't put it under the hood before is because they were really working on how to make that dual mass flywheel light, and that's something that they have finally managed to achieve for 2019. When it comes to front seat comfort, it's important to remember what the MX-5 was designed to be and what it was not designed to be. This was really designed for sort of the 80th percentile male in America as far as overall dimensions. Mazda was very interested in making the MX-5 as light as possible, and one of the ways you do that is by making the MX-5 purpose fit to your average customer. And making this vehicle a little bit larger so it could accommodate larger people or having a more adjustable driver's seat so it could accommodate smaller people would increase the weight of the vehicle and sort of defeat the purpose of the lightweight sports car. So rather unfortunately, if you're much taller than I am, I'm six feet tall, or if you're that much shorter than I am, you may have difficulties fitting in the car and feeling comfortable. The seat does not adjust for height. It does move forward and backward. And as you move it forward, it does raise up a little bit. So some shorter people may not have a problem driving the vehicle. The driver's seat also has a recline function, but of course, because I drive with the seat all the way back, I can't really recline it. A touch that I appreciate in this vehicle is that this knob at the front of the seat causes the seat bottom cushion at the front of the seat to raise up and give you a little bit more thigh support. Of course, the standout change for 2019 is a tilt telescopic steering column. This is something that MX-5 shoppers have been asking for for a while, and Mazda was finally able to make it lightweight enough to include in the vehicle. In my mind, this comes across as a dedicated size box wrench, for instance. Uh, for instance, a nine millimeter wrench rather than a crescent wrench, because the nine millimeter wrench is going to be slimmer and sexier and lighter weight than a crescent wrench. Crescent wrench may be more useful, but it's not as good for a specific task as an actual closed boxed wrench. And that's what I think is going on here when you take a look at this versus something like a Chevy Camaro convertible or a Ford Mustang convertible. Taking a look around the interior, we have fixed headrests with a Bose logo on ours because we do have the up-level Bose audio system with integrated headrest speakers. If you move on over to the doors, you'll notice that the trim panels match the body color of the vehicle. And then we have a soft touch armrest and a few selected soft plastics here as well. One of the things that's always impressed me about the interior in the MX-5 is that this vehicle is definitely designed with light weight in mind. But the vehicle overall manages to have more creature comforts and I think be better put together than something like the Alfa Romeo 4C, which is made of carbon fiber but actually manages to be heavier than the Miata. In the center of the dash, we have the latest Mazda Connect infotainment system and a standard touchscreen LCD. This is a little bit different than previous model years of the MX-5, which didn't start out with the touchscreen in the dash. We expect Apple CarPlay to be available on this screen soon, but we don't have any dates yet. The model we're driving today is, of course, a manual transmission model, and then you'll find the infotainment controls right there behind the shifter. We also had the opportunity to very briefly drive an automatic transmission vehicle, although there really weren't many changes as far as the transmission goes this year. Between the front seats, there is this very small padded cover to a small storage cubby where you can just barely keep your key, perhaps a granola bar right inside. Behind that small storage compartment, we have two cup holders. These are removable if you want to pull these out. And you can actually dock this one right here over on the passenger side, right like that. it will actually dock into this little slot if I can get it in there right like that, and then you can see you can move the cup holder to that position, although it will bash the leg of your passenger. Also between the front seats, we have a small storage compartment. This passes for the glove box in the vehicle. Again, this is kind of a nice touch because in something like the Alfa Romeo 4C, which is supposed to be ultra light, we actually don't have any storage compartments like that at all. The instrument cluster is essentially the same as we have seen in the past. We have a large central tachometer right there. This small area right here shows the gear that you're in, and then we have a speedometer over here on the right. And then to the left of the tachometer, it's a little bit difficult to see, we have a multifunction display. This gives us things like the engine temperature, fuel level, and our trip computer readouts. The steering wheel is one of Mazda's standard designs. It's a round wheel. We have volume controls over here with track forward, backward on the left side of the wheel. If we press the center in right here, that changes the trip computer readout on the left side of the tachometer. We then have dedicated phone buttons. And then on the right side, we find the controls for the cruise control system. 
The MX-5 is not a very big vehicle, so you shouldn't expect a very big trunk back here. But I have to say that I was actually impressed by the amount of cargo you can stuff back here because we have a backpack. You can actually put about two of those right back there. And then under that, I have a 22 inch roller bag. This actually fits quite well down here in the trunk. I suspect depending on the exact size of your carry-on luggage, you might be able to stick perhaps two 20-inch roller bags right back there, perhaps some other small personal items as well. And the top does not affect the cargo capacity, including whether you get the soft top or the hard top, because the top actually goes in a separate compartment right here behind the rear seats and between that area and the trunk. The location for storing the top is the reason that if you get the MX-5 RF, which is the hardtop version, that we get those sort of buttress styled components in the rear. And that was to help make everything line up properly while that hardtop is deploying and undeploying. When it comes to our exclusive trunk comfort index, the MX-5 scores relatively well for a convertible. Although this cargo area is obviously smaller than some of the convertibles out there, I think this is actually perhaps a little bit more useful than what we see in the Camaro convertible. So what are you going to notice about the MX-5 when you get one out on the road? Well, you won't really notice the extra power immediately, and that's because most of that extra power happens way up there at around 7,000 RPM. So you're not going to notice that right away. But what you will notice is that this engine is definitely a little bit smoother than the outgoing engine. Some of that has to do with overall engine refinements, and some of it has to do with that new dual mass flywheel. We don't get nearly as much chatter from the clutch when you're engaging it if you just miss it just right. Uh, you won't get that as much in this vehicle. And we also don't get as much uh, jitter in the car if you're driving the vehicle at very low RPMs in the inappropriate gear. Obviously, enthusiasts would never do that to their MX-5, but it could happen now and then, and this is going to be smoother in those situations than the previous version. We obviously haven't had the ability to give this our official zero to 60 tests because we're not testing this on our own home turf, but you should logically expect this to be one, perhaps two tenths of a second faster than the outgoing model under full throttle acceleration. I expect that the delta between 2018 and 2019 is actually going to be largest when you get the automatic transmission version of the MX-5 because in addition to giving that model more power, just like this manual transmission version, they've also tweaked the final drive ratio to make it a little bit more aggressive. So same vehicle to same vehicle, it would already be a little bit faster than 2018. Now it has more power, so it's probably going to be perhaps an additional one-tenth of a second faster. Again, we won't have the opportunity to give you official numbers on that until we can get one of these back at home and run it through our usual battery of tests. And that's why I'm just gonna go ahead and pop the braking number for the 2016 and 2017 models that we've tested up there at the top of the screen. Because as far as braking scores go, this vehicle has gained only about seven pounds, so it should be essentially identical, as long as it's identically equipped. So same tires, same setup and trim level for the vehicle. Obviously, the RF model will take a little bit longer to stop from 60 miles an hour back to zero because it is about 120 pounds heavier. But overall, the hardtop doesn't really have that much of an impact on the overall vehicle dynamics. 120 pounds is just like having a relatively lightweight passenger in the passenger seat. Although I have to say that it does seem to affect the ride quality of the vehicle. In terms of overall handling, the MX-5 is excellent. But it's also important to remember that the MX-5, this style of vehicle, it's not intended to be an absolute road gripping machine, so you will find better horizontal grip in a number of performance vehicles. Now those are obviously going to cost more than this as well. Instead, the MX-5 has long been about precision. We really do get an awful lot of feedback from the front tires, even though this does have electric power steering, just like most new cars in America. Electric power steering really saps an awful lot of fun out of a variety of luxury vehicles, but the lightweight construction has really allowed Mazda to bring some of that feeling back into the vehicle. Really everything about this car is affected positively by the lightweight mission of the MX-5. That's really noticeable when it comes to the overall driving dynamics and the handling and the way that those two things combine in this vehicle. Obviously, reducing weight improves your handling ability, it improves grip, but it also allowed Mazda to give the MX-5 a softer suspension than you might suspect. We've spent most of our time out here in California with the sport trims of the MX-5, and these do have a much firmer suspension than the regular model. But as it is, this is still very comfortable and very livable. This is the kind of vehicle that you could commute daily with and not really have too much of a livability problem. 
personally, I like the bass suspension tune in the MX-5. I think that the sport tune is just a little bit too firm for my tastes, especially if you're driving this out on really rough highways. It can get a little bit of a bobblehead feeling going on, but as I said, overall still very livable compared to a lot of high performance vehicles. In terms of cabin noise, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop up the existing scores that we had from the 2016 and 2017 models that we've tested up there at the top of your screen, because again, those haven't really changed for 2019. We're expecting exactly the same numbers because the tops have remained essentially the same. This engine does seem to be a little bit more refined in terms of overall exhaust note than the previous generation, so you might see a little bit of a tick up in terms of overall cabin quietness as a result of that, but it should be largely the same. One of the other major benefits for lightweighting a vehicle is improving your fuel economy. And we've been averaging about 30 miles per gallon over two days of mixed driving in this vehicle. We've gone to up to 5,000 feet, we've gone back down to sea level, and we've done that over and over again. We've been driving this hard out on California's coastal winding mountain roads, and we've still been averaging about 30 miles per gallon, which is really quite impressive. Now, admittedly, this doesn't produce a lot of power, so we're not talking about Honda Civic Type R power or Subaru WRX STI power, so it's a little bit difficult to compare this to that kind of vehicle, but this is still a fun to drive granule transmissioned rear wheel drive vehicle with grippy tires on it in the version that we're driving right here and 30 miles per gallon is still quite impressive especially for the amount of fun that you can have and the fact that aerodynamics weren't as important for this kind of vehicle as for some of those sleeker vehicles out there. Their overall Roadster format definitely seems to take a little bit of a toll on overall fuel economy of course because we're missing this roof right here. Roadsters are not terribly popular vehicles for obvious reasons. They're just not as practical as a four-door sedan or a four-door crossover, but they are an awful lot of fun. And that's really what the MX-5 has long been about. It's been about fun, it's been about driving precision, and there really is no equal at the moment in America for this kind of vehicle. In Europe and in some other countries, you can find some other small volume manufacturers that are making vehicles along the same lines as this, but nothing is going to have the same character as the MX-5. That character is not just about driving refinement, of course, but also practicality and reliability because this is the fun car that you can drive and not worry so much about reliability like a British exotic or an Italian exotic. And of course, you can have serviced at any Mazda dealer out there. The important thing to remember about the MX-5, as always, is that this is about handling precision and fun especially out on tight tracks, tight courses, tight roadways like we're on here, or your favorite autocross track. If you get this out on a larger track, then something like a high-performance Camaro or a high-performance Mustang is definitely going to be a bit more fun, but out on coastal roads like this, really nothing beats it. So how much will an MX-5 set you back? Well, 2019 does bring a price increase over 2018. That's to be expected since we get the extra horsepower under the hood, the tilt telescopic steering column, and of course, the backup camera on the rear. Mazda tells us that the RF trim, which is again the hardtop model, is the most popular version of the MX-5. So that's gonna be the one that you'll be able to get your hands on first. It'll set you back $32,345. That's a relatively modest price increase versus the 2018 model year vehicle. So I expect that the base soft top version, which is what we're looking at at this moment, is gonna be a relatively similar increase at the bottom end of the scale. So expect the base soft top to still be right around $26,000. On the surface of things, that would seem to imply that the hard top is about a $6,000 upgrade over the soft top, but that's actually not the case because you cannot get the absolute base trim of the MX-5 in the RF trim. Instead, the RF is more of a mid-level trim corollary to the soft top version. If I were shopping for an MX-5 with my own cash, I'd have to say that I would probably pick that popular RF trim as well. The reason is that the curb weight increase of 120 pounds is not that significant, and the hard top brings an awful lot of benefits to the vehicle. Not only do you not have to worry about this canvas top deteriorating over time, the top is powered, so if you're not interested in actually reaching behind you and opening and closing the top, that could be a reason to buy it. But my big reason for buying it is that the interior is significantly more quiet. Remember that this is a single layer canvas top in sections. There are some sections where there's more than one layer going on, but for the most part, it's just a single layer of canvas between you and the outside world. And when you're going highway speeds, say 70 or 75 miles an hour, this is considerably louder on the inside than the hardtop version. 
The hardtop version also gives you a little bit more protection in colder weather or hotter weather. Because right now, where we are at this moment, it's only 64 degrees out here, so it's not really a problem. But earlier on our drives, we were driving through areas of California where it was over 100 degrees outside, and in the hardtop version, we didn't have to have the air conditioning cranked as high. And in this version, with the air conditioning all the way on, you still felt like your head was getting baked a bit. Another thing that's changed for 2019 is the way that Mazda has chosen to package the MX-5 because you can now get some of the top end options and a combination of some of the sport options in one trim level of the MX-5 and you couldn't do that in the past. So if you want the more luxurious looking interior but you also want the limited slip differential and the Recaro seats and the Bilstein shocks, etc., now you can do that for 2019 and you couldn't before. And you can do that on both the RF and the soft top as well. And in the past, for some reason, you couldn't get the Recaro seats, which is what we're looking at right here in the hard top version. You will, of course, have to wait until we can get our hands on one of these for a complete week so we can do our usual battery of pricing and comparison rundowns, especially since pricing is not available on the soft top yet. But at the moment, I can definitely say that if you're shopping for a fun vehicle that's a little bit out of the ordinary, put the MX-5 on your shopping list. This is an absolute blast to drive. But the thing that I've always liked about the MX-5 Miata is that it's an affordable fun thing to drive because at around $26,000 base, $32,000 for the hard top version, this is the kind of vehicle that is much more accessible than a Porsche rag top or even actually some versions of the Camaro or Mustang will be more expensive than what we're looking at here and they're not necessarily going to be as engaging or as much fun. The MX-5 also is very livable, so if you are thinking perhaps you want two cars, this doesn't have to be just the weekend car. It doesn't have to be just the fair weather car. This could actually be the commuter car because the MX-5's base suspension is very, very livable on a daily basis, and perhaps your weekend car is a crossover that you use to take your kids out camping. A lot of fun weekend cars also get terrible fuel economy, and that's not what we see in the MX-5 either. Again, this gets about 30 miles per gallon in real world driving, depending on your blend of highway and city driving. So again, this is definitely something that you could use to commute with every day if you choose to, or it's also a fun, inexpensive weekend alternative. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Check on our related videos. You'll find those on your screen at this time. You can also click at the top of your screen if you want to go over to patreon.com and support this channel, and I hope you do, and I will see you next week.